I have a confession to make. I don't edit my podcasts. That's right. I do multiple video podcasts every week. We record it in Riverside and I export that video and upload it to YouTube basically without doing anything else. I put some chapters, descriptions, and text. But when it comes to editing, I make sure that I plan it well enough, have things I'm going to share, whether it's media or websites. When me and my co-host are done recording, that video is just ready to upload. But I'm going to walk you through how I plan, record, and then publish my podcast so I don't have to touch anything. And if I do have to make a minor change, like someone had to take a break or someone misspoke, well, you can edit that in just seconds using the Riverside Editor. Step one is planning. Every time I'm going to record a new podcast episode, I have a document here that I share with my co-host. We do research and then I outline the entire show, every topic with bullet points that I want to cover and who might be taking lead of these topics. It's all planned in the document. Planning and getting that straight ahead of time is going to make the recording process much more seamless. And a big part of that is finding a great co-host, someone who is knowledgeable about the topic you're talking about or someone you have a great rapport with. And during that planning process, actually delegating, maybe you'll take point on this story or you'll take point in this segment can help the flow of the show and give you a break making sure there's less mistakes and less stumbles as you record. And the second part of the planning is any media or websites that I want to share, I open them all in a tab group here in Safari. Tab groups are a feature on the Mac where you can collect a bunch of links and I actually have a tab group per episode when I record a podcast. Then all these websites are ready to share. I can just click through them. And then in the Riverside Studio, I can quickly access that screen share. And this way I can make a visually engaging podcast, not just me and the co-host talking. I'll show you how that works in a second. Do keep in mind, it's going to take some time and practice to get really comfortable recording your podcast. If you're just starting out, you might not even be comfortable hearing your own voice. I actually have an entire video about why you don't like the sound of your own voice. You can check that out up here or the links in the description, but it's going to take some time. But as you get five and 10 episodes in, you'll develop a flow of your podcast, how you like to record, how you like the show to transition from one segment to the other, and you and your co-host will develop a rapport as well. I've been podcasting for over 14 years, and so it does take some time. It won't take you 14 years, but be easy on yourself as you're starting out. You will get more comfortable and make less mistakes, which will mean less editing in the future. Now, once I'm ready to record, I log into my Riverside account and I'll go to my studio. Here I choose my camera, microphone, and speaker output. I always use wired headphones so I can monitor my own voice and hear my co-host. I don't have to worry about battery or pairing with wireless headphones, and then I'll jump into the studio. But before we jump into the studio, the other big factor that comes with less editing and less mess ups is having the right gear for the job. And it doesn't have to be expensive. Using a USB microphone and your laptop, maybe having your mobile device or iPhone and continuity camera for high quality video, all of that works with Riverside. So using consistent gear, the same setup from episode to episode, it's going to cut down on that setup and breakdown time, but you'll have less technical issues and variables in your recording process. Now I have an entire video that talks about my creator desk where I use a video switcher and Riverside, the Rodecaster Pro 2, podcast microphone, all of that. If you want to learn more about my setup, I'll link it above and down in the description. Now I'm in the Riverside studio. I can invite my co-host just by copying this guest link and sending it to them. And then we're off recording. Now, if you have any visuals, maybe if they're video files or there's some audio files you want to play, take some time to upload it to the media board ahead of time. Once they're in the media board, you can preview them here. And when you're ready to share them live during the recording, you can make them go live. And this will be recorded as a separate track and present in the Riverside editor. And all those websites that I have in my tab group ready to share, I can screen share from my Mac by clicking the share button at the bottom of the Riverside window. I'll go over to the window option, choose my other web browser and click share. Now I'm sharing those visuals here as we record. This is being recorded and will be available in the Riverside editor later. Now let's start the recording. You'll see the five second countdown. Hopefully you have our opener already set. You're ready to go and you can say, Welcome to Primary Technology, the show about the tech news that matters. This week, we're talking about the Apple Vision Pro, the new Apple Sports app, and OpenAI is launching a new video generating. Okay, well, I actually messed up the opener right there. I was going pretty good for a second. So in the event that you do misspeak or mess up or the co-host has to get up for a moment, one of the strategies I use to keeping my editing down to a minimum is setting markers, which you can do right here in Riverside. I'm going to click Add Marker. And when I go into the Riverside editor later, I can see all the points that I may need to edit, jump right to that point, edit it quickly. And now I've cut my editing time in just minutes. I don't even have to download files, bring them into a third party editor. I can do it all right here. As we record, I'll share my screen and media board files, click stop. And then of course my video and my co-host, those are uploaded to the Riverside dashboard and all those screen shares and media board files as well. And now I'm going to show you my typical process when I take a video podcast, and I don't really edit it at all. I just export it and upload it to YouTube. 
Here I am in my Riverside account, and I'll go to one of my past episodes. Here's episode 9. I'll click the purple edit button in the top right corner, create a new edit. My intro is already set, because I actually planned that opening, and as soon as the countdown hit zero, I started recording. So if I hit play just to preview it, the opening is ready to go. I don't have to change anything about it. Now there was a moment where my co-host's internet dropped mid-recording, but thanks to Riverside, his video and audio files were completely safe, those uploaded to the clouds later, and he just rejoined the studio. I kept recording, never stopped, and we were able to continue the show after that. But I do need to edit out that little break. But I dropped a marker, and you can see down here in the Riverside timeline, this purple dot is the marker that I dropped once I realized that his internet had dropped. You can see there I am, there's the screen share, but no co-host. But now in the Riverside editor, I can put the playhead right before he drops out. I'll split the clip using this tool right here, and I'm editing this in real time. I'll split it again, I can click this section and the trash can to remove it, and now I just edited out that part. It's a seamless cut, now that edit is good to go. We stopped recording as soon as we were done with the actual podcast episode, so I don't even have to edit the end. And now I can go over to click export a 4K video file, normalize audio so everything's the same volume, export video, and now I can download that, upload it to our YouTube channel, mark it as a podcast, and that's it. Typically we don't even have to edit that much. That was actually cutting out a section because there was an internet issue. But other than that, I can now upload that to YouTube and it took me literally seconds. Riverside even has a full episode option right here. So with one click, you can generate your full video episode and just download it and you're ready to share it without any editing. If I go into preview this episode, you can see that all of the screen shares that I used, here's my web browser using Riverside's built-in screen share function, is automatically placed in the edit. Anytime I stop sharing my screen, it focuses back on me and my co-host. We start sharing screen again and the visual pops up here. If I wanted to do any kind of design, I could add our brand background. This way it looks like our podcast branding. The full episode generator in Riverside automatically add captions, but I can remove that if I'd like just by clicking here. And one last strategy, when you record, if you're struggling to find words or maybe you're thinking about what to say, just leave a space, leave it silent, a break. And then in the Riverside editor, we have a new set pace feature. If you click magic tools and then set pace, you can actually choose to remove all silences. You can actually drag this slider or click to see how much silence you want to remove. Riverside will tell you how many pauses. Here we have 19 pauses and that will cut out 28 seconds. And then I can click apply and all of those silent sections will automatically be removed from this edit. So if you can practice and train yourself to not use filler words or say things as you formulate ideas, just leave it silent for a moment then you can remove all those silences with a single click in the Riverside editor, cutting your editing time even more. And you can see all those video podcasts get uploaded to our YouTube channel here. I could play one, and the video you see here is the export directly from Riverside with our screen shares, me and my co-host picture in picture. And whenever we're not sharing the screen or media, we'll be side by side. High quality video and audio thanks to Riverside's local recording. And all of that was done in just a few clicks, barely any editing, if at all. And that's how I record multiple video podcasts a week using Riverside and not spending any time, maybe just a few seconds here and there, on editing that content. If you have any questions, leave comments below this video, I'll answer you there. And if you wanna learn more about Riverside and how to use it for your content, whether it's webinars, training videos for your business, or your podcast, I'll put a playlist right up here where I walk you through the entire platform and all the new features, which we have new features coming out all the time. And if you want to learn more about your gear and setup, maybe you want some recommendations for every budget level from under $100 to over $1,000, I'll put one of my videos on setups right up here. Thanks for watching. We can't wait to see what you create with Riverside.